Let me show you a crazy simple way that I built this left navigation menu. Just go into the screen where you want to left navigation. And for best practice, I use containers so that my apps can be responsive. So I have a sidebar container here. And if we click on the plus button, do a search for tab. There's a modern control called tab list that we can use for this scenario. And once we add this to the screen, we need to bind it to a data source. It gives us some sample data so that we can see what it will look like. And you can technically hard code the data here, or you can bind it to your own data source. I already have all of the tabs that I want to show in a collection called tab list items. So I'm going to replace what's showing here in the items property to that collection of tab list items. And just to show you in my case where I'm getting this from, if you go to the app tab and you go to the formulas, I'm actually using a named formula to store all of my tab items. You don't have to do it this way, but if you want the tab items to be the same across multiple screens and you want it to be the most performant, this is a good way to do it. So you see, I'm just defining my collection, which is tab list items and saying equals. And this case is a little special because I'm doing some security trimming. So if the current logged in user is an approver, then I want to show a different list of items versus if that person is just a regular end user. So that's why I have this if condition here where I'm checking to see if this is approver is set to true or false. And if it's true, I'm showing one additional tab option to get them to the approvals tab. Otherwise, I'm hiding that. But essentially to make this a function as a navigation list, whatever data source you're pointing it to needs to have at least two things. And that's the name to be displayed on the tab item and the screen which it should go to. So if you have these two properties, you're good. Now, if we go back to our screen where we're adding in our left navigation, you'll see a few things that are a little wonky. First of all, it's showing numbers here, which isn't what we want. And second of all, it's showing across the screen horizontally, which is not what we want. So we need to do some configuration of this to get it in the right format. First thing we'll do is change what's displaying here. So we'll click on the tab list. We'll use the properties panel on the right hand side and we'll go to this fields property and click edit. We just need to bind it to the data source. So if we click add a field, we just need to tell it that we want to show the name of the item. So we'll do that, click add, and now it's automatically updated. Now, as far as how it's displaying across the screen horizontally, that's a quick fix as well. So right here on the same properties window, if we just look at this alignment option here, we can change that from horizontal to vertical. And we're getting there. Now you'll notice that our items disappeared and we just have these three dots. Another simple fix. Right now, this is optimized to be shown horizontally. So all we need to do is change the height. It's set to 55, so it's responding automatically to hide the items. But if I just bump that up, or better yet, if I use this toggle here called flexible height, now all of our items are showing. So this will automatically respond the height based off how many items that you have and based off of the screen size that you're using this on. So we have a great looking menu, but right now it doesn't do anything. It's not navigating us to any screens. So we need to do a couple more pieces of configuration to get this fully functioning. We'll select our tab list here and in the properties drop down on the upper left, we're going to go to the on select property. In here, I'm going to paste in some power effects that I have. And this is doing two different things. The biggest one is to actually navigate the user to the screen of the selected tab. So we're just using the navigate function for that and we're pointing that to the tab list selected dot screen. But before that, you'll notice that we have a context variable that we're defining with the update context called var tab. And we're setting that also to the selected item of this tab list. And that's specifically to be able to update this tab list so that the selected item changes accordingly when we move back and forth between different screens. Because right now, if we were to run this and I moved, say, to the dashboard screen, it works fabulously. And if I move to the history screen where I was, now we'll see that it's still showing the dashboard screen is selected even though we're on the history screen. So that's why we need this context variable is to be able to reset and make sure that it knows what options should be selected. So the last piece of the puzzle is two different things. We're first going to go into our tab list here and go into another property called default selected items. And you guessed it, we're going to set this to that variable that we just defined called var tab. And you see, as soon as I do that, it updates the tab to show the current history tab that we're on. Now, the only last thing to make sure this really gets what we want is we're going to click on the screen itself and we're going to go to the properties drop down and go to the on visible property. And here we're going to put in that same update context to var tab, but we're going to specifically set it to the history tab. So this will just make sure that as soon as the screen is hit, it'll make sure that that variable gets changed to the selected screen and then updated accordingly. And now when you tie that all together, you have a nice, beautiful left navigation menu to take you between all the screens in your app.
And you might notice this exact same control is being used for a horizontal menu as well. And this is very useful if you want to have different views of galleries. So you see I'm using it in this case to be able to filter the gallery below to see items that are approved, rejected, or pending approval. So lots of different use cases for this one modern tab control. And one last thing before we go, we can tweak the look and feel of this tab control as well. So if we select the tab control and in the bottom right hand side of this properties panel, we have this style and theme section. So we can do minor changes here, like changing the color palette that it uses. By default, it's going to inherit from whatever theme that you have set. But if you wanted to diverge from that, you can simply choose this color picker and you can either choose a different theme or just a custom color. So if I didn't want that to be red and I wanted it to be something totally different like this bright green, you see as soon as I select that color, the background color of that left rectangle is changing. And I can do the same thing for the font. If I want the font to be a different font style, I can diverge from the theme as well. Maybe set that to Georgia. Same thing for font size if I want to make it obnoxiously big and font color and font weight. So I can make it bold, whatever I need to do. But I'm gonna reset all this back because it looked way better before when it was matching our theme. And there you go, that is all there is to it to create a simple left navigation menu in a matter of minutes with the new modern tab control. Let me know what you think in the comments if you found this useful. And if you're interested in this template, this is available on the Power Platform Samples repository. I'll put a link up here in the video and in the video description below so you can go grab this template and check it out. And if you wanna see more behind the scenes about this particular template and how I built it, let me know in the comments as well. Maybe I'll do a full length video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please click that subscribe button to support the channel and I'll see you in the next video.